Clip Studio Paint released a major update in 2023, so today I'll be exploring some of the new features that I find useful for making digital art. How this is only version 2.0, I don't know, considering this software originated in 2001. Well, it's about time. One of the most significant new features in Clip Studio Paint 2.0 is the new color mixing mode, which allows you to mix colors in a more natural and intuitive way. In traditional art, mixing yellow and blue will give you green, but in digital art, that same mixture gives you gray. By enabling the perceptual mixing mode, you can make yellow and blue mix to green. What's more, you can adjust the brightness correction to make the color mixture lighter or darker. You can best see this by trying each of the modes, then viewing your artwork in grayscale. This property also affects shading as well. For example, if I blend some white and black into the blue and fade it out, you can see how the tapering is brighter when a high correction value is used. With no correction, the tapering only fades in opacity. A bit of brightness really helps the shading look more natural. You can also more easily blend the colors together using overlapping strokes when brightness correction is enabled. You can really see this effect on the black. I welcome this mode, but I feel like it's a bit hard to find buried in the subtool detail panel. This panel is rather large, so the option really should be somewhere more convenient like the layers or color panel. If you like this mode, you'll have to apply it to every brush you want to use it with, then save the settings as the default. What would be better is to have the setting applied globally. Same with brightness correction. What a pain that would be to have to adjust that for every single brush. While Clip Studio Paint would not be my first pick for a traditional painting app, this upgrade definitely brings it closer to being usable for a traditional style of painting. Very few digital art applications support natural color mixing, yet it is critical to faithfully emulating the look of traditional media. The fact that an even less developed, less traditionally focused application like Clip Studio Paint has the time and resources to integrate realistic color blending really reflects poorly on the competition. All of the major art apps really need to move into the future and offer better color models for painting. Another feature I'm excited about is the head model in Clip Studio Paint. This model allows users to generate realistic 3D heads that can be used as reference for their own artwork. The model is highly customizable, with sliders to adjust the proportions of the face, eyes, nose, mouth, and more. It can be a little difficult to find all of the controls for this. The model can be loaded from the Materials panel. Next, you'll drag the head onto the canvas. Now you can use the 3D camera controls to change your view of the head. With the head selected, you can go to the Subtool Detail panel and find the controls for the head model and facial features. Starting with the head model, here's where you can drag the sliders up or down to add to or subtract various features from your model. You can change it from a man to a woman, choose the age, and change the overall structure of the face. You can also customize the individual facial features. And you can tilt the head so it is not facing forward using the direction properties. You can also modify the lighting on the face using the light source properties. Ambient light can make the contrast of the shadows stronger or weaker. Now I can rasterize the head layer, reduce the opacity, and trace over it to create my character. I can drag in other heads to add more characters as well. This is a great model for practice drawing but I don't know if you can do much with it beyond that. There isn't a way I could find to open the mouth or change the mouth expression, or even open and close the eyelids, which will severely limit what you can do with this model if you're relying on it for a comic book or animation. Until more detailed customization can be done to this model, for professional work, you'd be better off using a different app to generate your models. But don't get me wrong, the fact that this is integrated into Clip Studio Paint is definitely a benefit and I understand the difficulty of generating customizable teeth and tongues. You can combine these heads with body models to complete the character, but the process could be more streamlined. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but I had to put the head and body models on the same layer, align them, shrink the head of the body model, then place the detailed head. It's not perfect, and the head likely won't stay linked to the body if I move it, but it will suffice. 
If your device supports it, you can use multi-touch to move the camera around. You'll need to look in the Subtool Detail panel under Operation to find the option. Once enabled, I can pan, zoom, and rotate. However, I wasn't able to rotate around the model to see the side of the head. From what I've seen, this should be possible, so maybe it's a bug or I'm doing something wrong. Perhaps the most innovative feature in Clip Studio Paint 2.0 is the new Hand Pose Scanner. This tool allows users to capture their own hand poses and apply them to 3D models. This can be a helpful tool for artists who want to create realistic looking hands in their artwork. By looking under Subtool Detail Pose Hand Pose, you can use a very useful and intuitive tool to pose your hands. But it gets even easier in Clip Studio Paint 2.0 because you can use your camera or webcam to scan your hand in real time and apply it to the model. This is an amazing idea and it works fairly well. Due to the structural differences between the model's hand and mine, the hand shapes won't match exactly, but it's very close. If I need to refine the fingers a bit manually, I can do that. The one critique I have about this feature is that it can be difficult to click the OK button when holding your hand up. Yes, you can pose using the opposite hand or click with your unused hand, but what would be better is a countdown timer that automatically captures the pose after, let's say, three to five seconds. I'm excited to see where features like this will go in the future. It really is a great time to be an artist because of all of the innovative reference image features that are coming out. Moving on to the next feature, a new fisheye mode is available for the perspective ruler. This will allow you to bend the vanishing points to curve your lines, giving you a fisheye lens effect. Depending on how I set these guides, I can get a variety of effects. Here I get sort of a bug's eye view of some tall trees. This is only available in the Pro and EX versions. Another amazing new feature in Clip Studio Paint 2.0 is the Shading Assist mode. This feature can automatically generate shading on top of your flat colors. To use Shading Assist, first select the layer or layers you want to apply shading to, then go to Edit Shading Assist. The Shading Assist dialog will appear and you can adjust the settings. The first thing to do is choose a shading type. You can choose between smooth shading and cell shading. Smooth shading creates a gradual transition between shaded and non-shaded areas, while cell shading creates a more distinct border. As you can see, these changes can be previewed in real time. We'll go with cell shading for now. Next, you'll need to choose a light source. You can choose between a directional light and a ball light. Directional light comes from a single point and can be angled, while ball light is more ambient and points in all directions. You can also move the light source around the canvas by dragging the manipulator. Dragging the manipulator ring makes the light wider and brighter. Finally, you can customize the colors of the light and shadows. You can choose from a variety of presets, or you can create your own custom colors. Using the Color Wheel 2 mode can help to choose lighter and darker values. Under Shadow Type, you can control the distribution of the colors as they contour to the form of the objects. When you're finished adjusting the settings, click OK to apply the shading. The shading will be applied to one or more new layers above the target layer. You can then adjust the opacity and blend mode of the shading layers to get the desired effect. Instead of screen, I could also try glow dodge or color dodge for a more natural result. This effect is a little sloppy in my opinion. Mostly the edges are too jagged and aliased when using cell shading. I can anti-alias the edges a bit using Gaussian Blur, but there should be a property to control the edge smoothness while in the Shading Assist dialog. Also, I don't think the shadows do a very good job of contouring to the face and hair. It's not how I would have shaded it, but I suppose it's easy enough to fix it with the Liquify or Eraser tools. If I try the Smooth Shading mode, I get additional controls to increase or decrease the highlight and shadow strength. I think this mode gives decent results. You can make the shading edges sharper or softer using the manipulator ring width. If I isolate the shading layers, you can see they are complete fills, so they cannot be adjusted in the same way as cell shading using blend modes. Shading Assist is a powerful tool that can save you a lot of time when shading your artwork. I look forward to seeing where this goes. Here's another new feature. You can now liquefy multiple layers at the same time. This is huge. I can't think of any other application that can do this directly on the canvas without having to apply a separate filter. 
This is incredibly useful and greatly reduces the need to merge layers together. For example, I can use a low strength to make small adjustments to the space, or I can use a higher strength to reshape it more drastically. As you can see, my color and lines are all still separate from each other. I would love to have the ability to use not just liquify, but blenders and paint brushes on multiple layers. I really hope this catches on and becomes the standard for all liquify tools. The only downside to this tool is that it can make your pixels a little blurry if the strength is too high or you're stretching the image a lot. The spin blur filter is a new feature that can create a spinning blur effect. It can be used to create a variety of effects, such as making objects look like they are moving quickly or creating a sense of depth. To use the spin blur filter, first select the layer or layers you want to apply the blur to. If you want to apply this filter non-destructively, duplicate it first, then hide the bottommost copy. Next, go to Filter, Blur, Spin Blur. The first thing you'll need to do is choose the blur strength using the slider. I want to reduce it quite a bit. Next, choose the direction of the blur. You can choose between clockwise, counterclockwise, or both. Finally, you can adjust the shape of the blur. A lower value makes a radial movement, a higher value stretches the movement into a specific direction. You can angle the blur using the tilt property. When you're finished adjusting the settings, click on OK to apply the blur. The blur will be applied to the selected layer. Since we applied the blur to a duplicate, we can show the original, then use layer masks with the eraser tool to selectively show the blur in certain areas. Now it looks like only part of the subject is in motion. You can also use Spin Blur to create a focal depth effect by blurring objects in the background. This filter is only found in the Pro and EX versions of Clip Studio Paint. An Align, Distribute Layers and Objects feature in Clip Studio Paint has been added. This is an essential tool for working with layers because it allows you to align and distribute layers and objects based on their centers or edges. As you can see, I have these three characters each in their own group. I can select all three groups and then use the Align Distribute panel to align them along their edges or evenly space them apart. If I were painting something like a pattern, this tool would be essential. Clip Studio Paint 2.0 is a major update that includes a number of valuable new features and improvements. I didn't cover everything, so check out Clip Studio's website if you'd like to learn more. There's a link to that in the description of this video. I think considering the low cost, Upgrading to version 2.0 would be totally worth it. That's all for this review. If you're interested in learning more about digital art, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my library of lessons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.